Okay, continuing along with my series on Python for physics people. Uh, this one is actually probably one of my favorite Python programs, and I've done it before in a lot of different ways, but uh, it, it introduces a really important technique, and that's a Monte Carlo calculation. So the basic idea of a Monte Carlo calculation is to generate random numbers and to use those random numbers in your calculation. So instead of like, um, well, let me just show you an example. And, and I'm going to show you an example of using random numbers to calculate pi. Uh, and then after that, the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to use random numbers to calculate moments of inertia for different uh, shapes. And it's going to be super great. OK, so let's think about what is pi. So if I have a box and a circle of radius r, that's a terrible circle. And I apologize. It's my own fault. But let's say this is this has a length of 1, and that's a length of 1. So this box right here is, this is the x, y plane. This box is 1 by 1, and the radius right here is 1. So the area of the whole thing, a box, is going to be equal to 1 times 1 equals 1. And then the area of this stuff is going to be a fourth the area of a circle. So a, let's call it q for quarter, is going to be pi r squared over 4 which is going to be pi over 4, because r is 1. So if I take the ratio of this area of the, the, the quarter to the total area, so ratio is going to be equal to the, this area, which is pi over 4 divided by 1, so pi over 4. So if I find the ratio of dots of, of stuff in here to the, the square, I can find the, the value of pi. And this where our random number generation comes in. Imagine that I generate random numbers between 0 and 1. And so I, I get an, a point right here. That point, it has a random number x, y. So p equals, let's say, 0 0.7, 0 0.85. And that's, of course, not a random number. Each of these numbers between 0 and 1. So I can find out if that point is in the circle or not in the circle. If Let's call, this, uh, let's call this r, the vector r. If r, uh, I call it r, I guess. If the square root of rx squared plus ry squared is less than 1, then it's in the circle. If rx squared plus ry squared is greater than 1, it's outside of the circle over here. So I'm going to get all these points, random points in here, just like that. And I can, I can say it's in the circle or not. And I can take the ratio of point, random points in the circle to total random number of points, and that should be pi over 4. OK, so in, in normal Python, there's a whole bunch of different options for random numbers. In Glowscript v Python, we only have one. I can say random. This returns a number between 0 and 1. I'm going to show you how to use it, and then we're going to make our thing. It's going to be great. Uh, let's just get right to it. OK. So switching over to Python. Uh, before I forget, uh, this code, I'm going to give you the code. You know, you know I'm going to give you the code. You know that. Uh, also, I'm going to include a link down below uh, to the playlist uh, for all my Python things. I'm, I'm thinking this is number 20. So I'm really uh, moving along. I'm trying to get into the second semester. We're going to do E&M and stuff like that, too. So, And this is really for the introductory level course. There's a whole bunch more advanced stuff, but I'm just focusing mostly on the introductory course. And this may not be an introductory course. Although it turns out to be very useful. OK, let's play around with random. So let's just say um, x equals random print x. OK, so I got, that's actually pretty high. That's a number between 0 and 1. I'm going to run it again. Different number. OK, so you can see that I get random numbers. Now, what I can do is, is this. I can say. Uh, r equals vector uh, random, random, 0. So this is going to make a point in the xy plane. And then I need to print that out. There you go. So now I have, I have a vector. I can find the magnitude. If the magnitude is less than 1, then I'm, I'm going to be good to go. Uh, and so what I want to do is generate a bunch of points. Now, I want to, I want to visualize this. Just for fun, because it is fun to do. Uh, and I could make these points spheres in vPython 
the 3D space. But I'm still going to make a graph. So let's make a graph. Uh, G, oops, weird. G1 equals graph. Uh, I don't need a label, but I do want to put a width and a height. So let's put uh, width equals 400, height equals 400. That's going to make it square. Now I'm going to put a dot in there. Let's put F Q for inside the thing. It's going to be G dots. Uh, color equals color dot red. And let's put one for the outside. We'll call it F O equals G dots. Color equals color color dot blue. So a G dot just puts a dot. It doesn't connect it by lines. Um, so let's just let's just plot some some points. So let's say F Q dot plot just to show you how it works. Uh, I'm going to do, let's just do random, random, and then run that. Okay, so there, there's my plot. And yeah, that's fine. Okay, so that's how it's going to work. So now what I want to do is to de 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 determine how many, how many points I need to make. So let's say n equals 100. And then I'm going to say n equals 0. I always like to do lowercase n as my counter and capital N as my maximum. Uh, now I can do something like this uh, while n is less than 100. No, less than n. And, and I'm going to go ahead and say n equals n plus 1. Because you don't know how many times I've, I've done this where I do that same line right there and then I forget to add n equals n plus 1 and it goes on forever and then I just go boo, I just get it. There's no easy way to kill uh, the program. And I think in GlowScript there is, but okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is to generate, um, I'm actually going to call it a vector r. So I'm going to say r equals vector uh, random, random, zero. Now I'm going, to, I'm going to say, okay, is that magnitude less than one? So if mag r is, and, and you could say less than or equal to, uh, but it's, it's that borderline thing, it shouldn't really matter less than one, if the magnitude is less than one, then it should be inside the circle. So what I'm gonna do is let's go up here and make some variables. Uh, n count, let's see, r, uh, c, n equals zero. Uh, and then n is my total number. I just want the number in the circle to the total. Okay, so I only need c, n. So if it's inside, then I'm gonna add one to n. Uh, c, n equals c, n, plus one. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna plot that point. I'm gonna plot that point in my graph. So I'm gonna say fq dot plot uh, r dot x r dot y. Else is outside of the thing. So if 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 not, then I'm going to I, I want to add one anyway. Right? So I'm not gonna do that, but I'm just gonna plot a point here. So I'm gonna say f o dot plot r dot x. And this is going to make it blue, or one's blue and one's red, so it'll be different colors. So we'll be able to see it. r dot x, r dot y. Now, I just realized something up here. I don't want this to happen instantly, so I want it to do, I want it to take a second. Let's well, 50 seconds. So rate 50. So, I mean, it'll take two seconds. Uh, so I'll only do 50 operations per loop. And then I'm going to add one to n, and then that's it. At the end, I can say, uh, T pi, I can't use pi, this is reserved, is going to be the uh, ratio of cn times 4 divided by n. Right, that's right. So the ratio is, so pi is the ratio times 4. Yeah. And then I can print that. Print pi equals, I should say approximately, whatever, T pi. Okay, and that's just 100 data points. Okay, so let's, let's run this and see what happens. Okay, you can kind of see a circle. You can kind of see this, this quarter of a circle. And if I scroll down here, I get pi equals three. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Okay, but I can change, let's increase this to 500 and this to, to 1,000 points. It's starting to look like a nice circle now, huh? And, and you can definitely see it's a circle. One of the things here, um, I, I don't have it square. Let's let's make that square. So let's say uh, let's do this. Y max equals 1.1. X max equals 1.1. I think that'll make it uh, the correct aspect ratio. No, it won't. 
Okay, so there is a way to make it do that, but let's just mm, 400, 400. So I want it not as high. Let's just try this at 380. There is a way to make it completely the right aspect ratio. Is that, I'm just holding. That's pretty close. Okay, close enough. Okay, and then I'm getting 3.196. Uh, can we do more? We can do more. And I do want to increase the rate because I don't want it to take forever. I mean, that's, that's just beautiful. 3.13. So, yeah, it's not a perfect calculation of pi, uh, but it is indeed a calculation of pi. One thing you could also do, and I've done this before, is to uh, plot the ratio uh, or the, the calculation of pi as a number of n, so you can see that, that graph going along. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I just want to show you a numerical calculation. I really want to show you this random variable in Python so that we can use another things. Oh, uh, by the way, if you look at uh, the, the Wikipedia page on, on Pi, it has an animation just like that. Now, I did this animation um, for Pi Day uh, probably around 2009. I'm trying to think. Probably around 2009. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure of the exact date. And so, did they base that on me or did I base that on them? That's for you to decide. But this is, this is the, the best calculation of pi ever because it's just so cool. Um, I have different variations of it, but it's just, I just think it's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to, I want to do things like calculate the moment of inertia of a disk. Uh, and instead of doing a surface integral, uh, we're just going to break it into a bunch of random points. And that's going to be super awesome. And I'll do that on the next thing. But again, link to the code down below, link to the playlist down below. Um, and then you can figure out who came up with this first, me or Wikipedia, and that'll be your homework. I'll talk to you later.